Uh, Ed, welcome back. It's a pleasure as always to have you here at Austin City Limits. Nice to be here. So hard to believe it was June 11, 2014, mm. the last time, the first time you did the show. And I remember I looked at that interview from that show, and you said that at that point in your career, with all the success you had had then, that you felt at peace, but at the same time kind of restless. But if it all came to an end, you'd be okay with that. Yeah. But that you still had a few more things that you hoped to achieve. All right, here we are, fast forward three years later. What do you think you've achieved over the last three years? Uh, well, a year after doing ACL, doing the three Wembley stadiums, that, that was kind of what I was hinting at in that interview. That, that, for me, playing a stadium was like the last thing to check off. But then, obviously, once you check that off, you make new things to check off. So, um, yeah, there's new goals now. There's a lot of bumps in the past, and like when you reflect back on the good stuff, you also reflect back on the bad stuff. So um, I'm mostly looking forward, but then like, yeah, career, like my career's spanned out anyway that it's, it's for everyone to see. So like, it's not that difficult to reflect because it's, you know, you, you come to an interview like this and someone brings up something. So yeah, I'm, I guess I'm constantly reflecting, but I am definitely someone who looks forward. I do often joke that I'll be at peace if it all ended, but like really and truly, I do want to play music for the rest of my life. Divide as an album was just, it, it took a long time and it was the only album I've actually made in one place. You know, I built a studio in my house and made it there, which was weird because I'd always done it in like bedroom studios or like tour bus studios or like when you're in town somewhere, find a studio with, a, with an engineer and then record a song there. So it was the first kind of complete body of work that was all done in the same place. There are certain songs like thinking out loud and like a team that at the time of doing them you're like this i like i know what my fan base is like and those two songs are definitely ones that i knew that my fans are going to like and continue to come come to gigs for it and uh you know the ones that i knew they wouldn't like that uh, you know other people are like oh this should, should go on the record and even though i liked the song i knew that it wouldn't stand the test of time for even like eight, it's three years on now from Multiply and there are some songs that people just don't talk about anymore. It's six months on from Divide and there are some songs that people don't talk about anymore. Most if not, not quite all of your songs do involve some sort of collaboration. So break that down for me. I mean, do the ideas come inside your head uh, as well as maybe most of the lyric and then you, you bring in somebody else to help put the polish on or how does it work? Man, it works in so many different ways. Uh, sometimes people get writing just for doing drums on a track. Like that's just how that's how the world is now. But like, uh, yeah, sometimes it's me sitting at a kitchen table by myself. Sometimes it's me sitting with one other person with a guitar. Sometimes it's like, like when when I did Galway Girl, it was uh, me. I had a folk band staying at my house, Bioga, uh, and there was six of them, six of them, and then they had a riff. So that's the riff on the song, and then, then there was other people that. So yeah, it's just that it's a it's a it's a it's a complicated thing. But sometimes it's just me. Sometimes I have a thirty second idea that we expand, and yeah, there's lots of lots of different things. You've said that you want to someday get back to it. Is that uh, easier said than done these days? Yeah, I think when you're a kid, like much like kids can learn how to be bilingual, or or you know learn how to ride a bike or like wh when you're a kid you can your brain picks up stuff so fast so when I started playing guitar I could pick it up like that or start playing cello you can pick it up like that or if you learn a song you can your mind just works better as a kid I think that's why kids have the best imaginations um, but I think learning piano now would be a lot more complicated than it would have been had I carried it on from a young age not to say that someday you might not find your way back I pr I'm going to be honest, man, I pr I, I'll need a lot of time to get up to a level where I can play it at a concert. I can play si I can play all the white notes, thinking out loud in <laughs> C, so I can play thinking out loud because it's just the white notes, but as soon as you start putting in you know, <laughs> a different key, I can't it gets, do it. It gets complicated. But I've never needed to do it, though, because, like, guitar, I can do guitar. For me, with the loop pedal, it's been... I've used it for 12 years now, and it's become another... In instrument that I use so that's like one element that I can just do loop pedal better than I would sound with a band because I'm not like never really played with a band so I wouldn't know how to kind of sit into it or have it mold well plus 
you know, the, the thing that... Loop pedals are very common on the singer-songwriter scene. If you go to the Bluebird in Nashville, someone will have a loop pedal there. I'm not the inventor of a wheel, but at the, le the level that I'm playing at, at like doing arenas and, and stadiums, there, there is no one else doing a loop pedal, so it is a talking point. And uh, it, me using it is, you know, good because I know how to use it, but also if I got a band, I'd just be another singer-songwriter with a band, whereas this has its one thing... The people can go. Oh no, it's a different kind of show because he does this, and I think that's that's important to hold on to. Do you know what a show can be? A hundred percent every day, but if an audience is great, it will be one hundred and fifty percent. There's just a different kind of energy that, that that you get from a great audience, and I often find it in the South, often often in Texas, often in Tennessee. Um, yeah, it's. I don't know whether it's because country music is so prevalent here, but like it, there's a real love for songs down this sort of area, I find. And especially in Texas, which of course thinks of itself as its own country to begin you with. You know, it's four times the size of the UK, Texas, four times. This and the is UK is like, I think the UK is big. I don't know how, like, someone the other day was just like, oh, we drove 12 hours to your show and we're going to drive 12 hours back. In England, like, we plan out for a week if we're going to drive three hours. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that's a journey. And like, it's, it's mad. And, of course, the barbecue is much better here than, than back in the UK. Yeah, well, we don't really have barbecue here uh, in the UK. Um, it's not really a thing. Yeah, but UK, I will say, probably does better ale. <laughs> 